Welcome back. You've just watched our first block of music videos programmed by Darren Sylvester tonight, which are um, music from Grace Jones, Leo, Craftwork, and Darren himself. Um, so yeah, that was a very great way to start the night, I think. Lots of really interesting music videos, as people in the chat noted. Lots of sample realizations um, that LCD Sound Systems Get Innocuous sampled the Craftwork song. Um, Something that the three of us were remarking on uh, during the videos was that two of them are ripped from TV. One is a Rage clip, um, the Grace Jones, and the Kraftwerk was, I presume, German television. And it's interesting that, you know, in, in sort of scrounging around for clips online, that some of the best things and the best finds come from unofficial sources or come from bootlegs, essentially. Um, well, yeah. You know Leo one was like, um, I uploaded that one last week <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, because um, when we did that first video in like 20, whenever that was, 2014 or something like that, that was a reference video and I couldn't find it the other week for whatever reason it was gone, but I had ripped it myself as, as the reference, so I thought I'm going to re-upload it. So yeah, all of them were actually non-official videos actually, mm -hmm. realising that. It's like a good like 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 archive missing there or something like that there's a great yeah yeah because there'd have to be so many great clips that are just lost to time now or perhaps the better way of framing it is clips that should be lost to time that aren't like you can write in like any band's name probably from the 80s or 90s above a certain level of fame and find these incredible videos that are you know early cuts of music videos or live performances in front of a very small studio audience um, there's, I think there's a weird pull now, especially not, I don't mean now as in like coronavirus. I mean, like today with access to everything at our fingertips, that something like that, sitting down and watching these old TV cuts is still sort of really transfixing. Um, I mean, it's, I imagine for a lot of people in the chat, seeing the rage font come up on the Grace Jones music video, which is this immediate sort of like serotonin hit or something where it's like, boom, it's, you know, the year is 1990, whatever you are. X years old, sitting in front of the television. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we were talking about before, like that was how I watched videos, was taping Rage throughout the evening and then fast forwarding ones I didn't like the following day. So you never had that choice to cut. But maybe I probably also watched a lot more because if you stayed up late, you would just keep, you were exposed to a lot more because yeah. you were, you had to stay up and you wanted to watch the next video. So you were kind of force-fed videos to a degree. Mm, yeah. I remember that a lot too. Just like, you know the video you want has to be coming up in like the next 10. And so you just sit there and be like, it's got to be soon. And suddenly mm. you'd be watching these things you'd never pay attention to. But I think like a lot of people were turned on to, to certain music or even visual ideas by that desire to see something else, which seems strange. Yeah, mm. for sure. For sure. I mean, it was one of the, primary ways that I found new music as a teenager was not so much by watching the chart countdown rage which was in the mornings but the late night rage when people would program it and you know particularly if an artist you already liked was programming it and then they would program all their favorite stuff and in a pre-internet era when I was a teenager it was it was yeah it was a, it was one of the great ways of finding finding new music as well as new visual ideas, as you say. But talking of visual ideas, I mean, one thing that struck me um, when I was watching that bracket of videos, the Grace Jones, and your video, Darren, and the craft work and the French video is, is this kind of interesting, um, you know, all those videos are partly about the face and, and you know, I think we often think of, we're kind of deeply conditioned to think of the human face as a kind of index of truthfulness maybe, but but there's something really interesting going on in those videos with the with Grace Jones and her mask and also with Kraftwerk and the mannequins and then also with this notion of lip syncing between the, the, the human face is something that reveals a kind of truth or an emotional transparency and then something that's being simulated or um, you faked in some way. I mean, I, I put faked in inverted commas, you know, uh, to throw that into question. But there is something interesting there, visually. Yeah, but on my, in my video, it's it's someone else lip lip singing to my song, which you'll see in most yeah. of them. 
Oh, that was what I really like too, is that similar to the mask or there's a enjoyment in seeing someone else mouth the words that you've written. Mm-hmm. So you become this director, literally like film director, but also sort of directing a character to have that um, voice. And so it's also a kind of thing of pop music. I was thinking when you're saying that, like, the pop video is universal in the sense that you're wanting as many people to see it as possible. It's kind of the idea of it as well. That's meant to be, uh, to a degree, palatable in the sense that you don't want someone to click off it, or which is much easier now. Um, yeah. the, the idea would be to, um, I enjoy the, the sensation of creating a personal thing I had written then become a universal statement. And that exists in artwork, but also in the music video as well, is that you have this kind of weird deliciousness of something personal that you've talked about then go out to being seen by lots of people. And mm-hmm. it's a great attraction and a great allure to creating artwork, really, in that kind mm-hmm. of way. And particularly when it's being mined or performed by someone else, which is something that does recur across your own videos, it's almost that sense something personal that's being almost been ventriloquized in some way through someone else's voice or body, which I find quite interesting in your, because it is some, it is something that recurs in your videos, which we'll see as, as we move through. Yeah. And I guess it's part of that collaboration to getting other people to do things and getting, I just go, you, I mean, I'm usually there on set and I'm help, I'm directing or not even directing, either helping with editing or looking over it, but essentially I'm, I'm really enjoying someone else to say those things. I guess maybe in an artistic sense it's that if I'm saying it and then I want the viewer to recognise it, say with a photograph or a sculpture, to have an internal dialogue with it. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, and a video clip is a way to express a, a, a viewer's internal dialogue back to the audience. Whereas I feel if I was singing the song back to you in a James Blunt, you're beautiful kind of way, <laughs> and I'm asking you to recognize me as the character, whereas I don't care in that respect. Uh, I don't need to be, I don't need to create a Beyonce, Jay-Z, drunk on the beach scenario that we can then talk about their relationship afterwards. I love the artifice. Is what I is what I love, and maybe that's what each other the face and the the mask. Yeah. I, like I'm attracted to those things or craft work being in a studio, and then they play live and they become mannequins, something like that. I really don't shy away from the fakeness, and I don't even think. And I think I'm saying that because I think the perhaps sometimes fakeness is perceived to be not authentic, but I kind of feel like I feel like it's actually like just a a window you can pass through and it can be a shield and a security blanket to be personal. If I had to do it myself with my face there, it would be, I'd have too many conceits and too many um, walls, bridges and walls in front of me to to say what I want to say. Whereas I can do that in the privacy of my music room and have someone else say it and I can do what I want and no one actually gets to see me, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm that I am and what you were saying about masks and mannequins and that sense of the, the staginess and Darren, what you were just saying about that sense that there's, there's a value in having something like a mask to be like the barrier between performer and audience to force them to engage with the absence or the, the simulacra that is present in some of your sculpture and photography. The Grace Jones video reminded me of the sort of beauty masks that you had cast in like bronze. Um, Mm -hmm. And what you were saying then about, um, like masks and people, the face and staring back, that photo you have of um, I think it's four or five women wearing sparkly green makeup just kind of staring at the Mm -hmm. screen and smiling and you can't tell what it's an ad for, you don't know what's going, but you know that you as the spectator, something's being asked of you, like standing in front of it, Mm -hmm. like that sense of like the use of a mask or the use of a blankness makes the spectator fill in the gap. Yeah, for a work like this called Green Editorial, where the models are just uh, they just smiling back, and so it my the work looks like an advertisement, but there's no because the work doesn't tell you what you're ad, what it's advertising. Conceptually, the work is just about the idea of someone projecting either a perfection or a model's face or a smile or something onto you, which we see all the time with advertisements and so forth. 
And so the work is not really about what it is you're selling, it's just about the act of projecting. And perhaps, and I think that Grace Jones with the mask is a bit like that too. It's a, it's a projecting power almost. I think with those models doing that, and that's what models do often quite a lot, is that they're projecting a power that you would like a... The smile of a model's photograph, she's outreaching a hand or he's outreaching a hand for you to grab onto and to be drawn into their world. And, I, and that kind of um, allure they provide is... Um, Magical and also sickening. That's why people talk about that aspect of we should be advertised in certain ways. But I'm really just talking about the act of that power that exists. Mm. Mm. Well, Grace, I I, oh, sorry, I mean you go. Oh, I was just going to say. I mean, Grace Jones in particular is one of the great, to me, kind of pop geniuses of this whole. Thing of the ca the character and the mask and and the gap between the two and as you said Darren and I agree with you like you know fake we're often sometimes uh, suspicious of fakeness but I think I think fakeness is in fact a great tool of pop musicians and you know great Grace Jones is up there for me with like David Bowie is one of the great kind of practitioners of, of artifice and, 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 you know, exploiting this gap between what's real and what's not. But also, too, that particular music video of hers makes me think of a, of a, of a, of a whole kind of subgenre of music videos that are about the kind of close-up of the face. And, you know, we were talking about some of them off, off stream, off camera before, like... Um, I mean, I guess the classic one is Sinead O'Connor's Nothing Compares to You, or um, which is really interesting in itself as a kind of examination of what's real and what's not, you know, the famous tear rolling down the cheek. Um, uh, U2's Numb is another one. Um, Miley Cyrus, there's a weird, like, I don't know how many people have seen it, but, you know, there was that video for Wrecking Ball, which everyone knows, where she's naked on the Wrecking Ball, but... There was like a director's cut, which is again like a close up of her face, um, you know, and again she's kind of crying. So it's <laughs> all these kind of interesting, yeah, there's a whole like mini history of, of music videos that are about, that are mm -hmm. about the, the face. Um, it's also, the that, that character role too, just when you say that Sinead O'Connor was, it was a Prince song. And yes, the, that's right. And so yeah. it was a, she's a cover version of a lip syncing of Prince song and also. The Grace Jones song was a pretender song. It's a Chrissy Hines song. That's so, right. it, and it's like, um, I think I read Chrissy Hines Luck thought that was better than the original when she thought, like, when she saw Grace Jones do that video and be that song, she goes, well, there was a power in that which I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what um, yeah. comes back to that fantastical element can be actually incredibly powerful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. One of the small pieces of trivia I discovered about the Grace Jones music video earlier today, Private Life, is that it was um, directed by a guy called Mike Mansfield, who he made a bunch of videos for um, Adam Ant and stuff like that, like Prince Charming and Ant Rap and those kind of songs. But he also made, I didn't realise this until today, I didn't realise the connection between the two, but he made what I consider to be possibly the worst music video of all time, which is the video for the Cures song, Charlotte Sometimes. He made that video. <laughs> which... That's a it... classic video though. That was on the, this was, on, that was on this playlist for a little while. Was it? <laughs> well, cause I know, I know we've, I know we've got a spoiler alert. We do have a Cure video coming up later on in the evening, but, um, but the video for Charlotte Sometimes, I've always thought to myself that if I ever got to program Rage, which I never will, boohoo for me i would start with charlotte sometimes <laughs> i would keep watching if you brought that up i would go like okay this person has got it nailed also the other thing about charlotte sometimes which i watch reading that it has i didn't realize that was the same director but there's like a classic 80s pool classic 80s video pool in charlotte sometimes where the camera pulls back and Robert Smith and the band always, as the camera pulls back, they turn and then come to the camera. And you realize that in that video, it's a very typical thing that happened in video clips where they'd be away and then this, they, they would turn to the camera and then face. And that was like a really, they do it all the time in Charlotte sometimes. It's quite, mm -hmm. you, you got to watch it's, that. It's an appalling video. 
the band hates it as well. I think the Cure absolutely hated it. Uh, hated I know. It. Yeah, because it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's an awful video. <laughs> um, yes. On the yeah. on the note of shit, um, I think we should pivot to something that's decidedly not, um, <laughs> which is the next block, um, which is slightly different. Uh, it's not a series of music videos. Darren, can you explain why? I think, think too, like um, Lewis and Angel are two two guys that I met in Melbourne through mutual friends, and I really love them. They're very enthusiastic, and uh, they're pretty much like a DIY filmmakers, and I really uh, love that about them. And so we're watching the first episode of American Eggs, which is like ten minutes, and I think it's like a five six episodic. Uh, movie about bit David Lynchian and so forth across America, and they've made a, f- a, a new one last year in Los Angeles, and they did a banner feed music video that's kind of steered into music videos a bit. And um, I love their use of green screen and voiceover. It's essentially what they're doing here. Is that I I like the ASMR sound where the voices are up close, and they would talk about how they get everyone to overdub their voices afterwards. And they would also shoot everything on really crappy green screens. Um, so they did that. And then they did a video for me called Be Right Back with some of the same characters. Lucinda Price appears in each one of these. Um, and she's a great comedian, presenter on Pedestrian, I think. I think it's called Pedestrian. And, yeah, so they made this thing where they would pitch to do a diner where there's an evil boss and then there's a diner and they hate each other and at the end uh, they were pitching it that she's a roller skating person and she disappears up into the stratosphere and she uh, commits suicide and blows up into the air and then comes down in a cloud of confetti and so I just let them go for it so yeah we're going to see their first episode and then we're going to see them make one of my music videos. Wonderful. So up next for our second batch is an episode of American Eggs and Darren's video for Be Right Back. Um, We will see you all shortly.